You're listening to Bible Prophecy Daily, a weekday podcast where Bible prophecy matters and matters greatly. Hello, I'm Charles Cooper, and welcome back again. If this is your very first time of listening to our podcast, I'm doing a series entitled Eschatological Geography, the World Map at the Return of Jesus Christ. Rather than being misled by every possible uh, event that occurs in the heavens and the claim that it has some significance to the return of Jesus Christ, which to date has proved to be untrue, They were so certain, so convinced that any change in the sun or the moon or the stars or any event that was out of the ordinary had significance for our Lord's return has simply proved to be untrue. I believe a far better indicator of where we are in human history relative to the possible return of Jesus Christ has to do with eschatological geography. In other words, the world map at the return of Jesus Christ must have certain particulars, or in my opinion, his return is not in any way imminent. That is, there must be certain countries in certain strategic places as the Bible predicts that it would be. You would have to agree with me that the eschatological geography or the world map at the return of Jesus Christ prior to 1947 simply was not possible. Israel did not exist, was not in their land, did not have a national government, and therefore could not enter into a covenant with anyone relative to their being in their land. Neither were Was there a temple or any kind of holy edifice that the Jews would see as the home of God that could be desecrated in such a way that even God himself would be offended by it? Prior to 1947, it simply did not exist. Therefore, any claims that the imminent return of Jesus Christ was possible prior to 1947, in my opinion, simply was not true. Now, of course, that did not stop uh, individuals from saying it was or saying it was so or seeking to manipulate or control or to disturb uh, people's uh, Uh, sanity by predicting some kind of eventual entrance into the last days marked by the seven years of Daniel's final prophecy. Another nation that we've seen will have eschatological significance that you will not find on the world map today, of course, is the Assyrians. The Assyrian people have have a promise in God's word that he will see them as a particularly special people, one of three nations, Egypt, Israel, and Assyria. The Assyrian people are in the world. There are tens of thousands of Assyrian Christians who are committed to Jesus Christ but they don't have a homeland, they don't have their ancient boundaries of a land that could be called Assyria, but I am firm in my conviction that that will be a reality when the eschatological end times actually begins. There's a third group of nations that also will have eschatological significance and if you look at a world map today you will not find these nations and of course I'm talking about three in particular in Daniel chapter 11 beginning at verse 40 through verse 43 Daniel writes this 
At the time of the end, the king of the south shall attack him, but the king of the north shall rush upon him like a whirlwind with chariots and horsemen, and with many ships. And he shall come into countries, and shall overflow and pass through. He shall come into the glorious land, and tens of thousands shall fall. But these shall be delivered out of his hand, Edom, Moab, and the main parts of the Ammonites. He shall stretch out his hand against the countries, and the land of Egypt shall not escape. He shall become ruler of the treasures of gold and of silver and all the precious things of Egypt. And the Libyans and the Cushites shall follow in his train. Now, of course, one of the important things that we have to discuss here is whether or not the, the, the land that bears the name Edom, Moab, and Ammon is the focus, or whether the people in the land are the focus. Now, according to Daniel 11, he tells us, these, these shall be delivered out of his hand. And then he names three, Edom, Moab, and the main part of the Ammonites. So is he saying that the land that is historically known as Edom, Moab, and Ammonite will escape the onslaught of Antichrist? Or is he talking about the people themselves who live in these places? Well, of course, when it says he shall stretch out his hand against the countries and the land of Egypt shall not escape. Now here, the land of Egypt would be, would, we would understand that to refer to the people, the land and the people who live there. He shall become ruler of the treasures of gold and of silver and all the precious things of Egypt and the Libyans, meaning the people, and the Cushites, the people, shall follow in his train. So when it comes to Cushites, who would be the Africans, and I believe he uses Cushites here on purpose, uh, because he's, just, he's not just talking about Ethiopia, he's talking about countries in Africa, and Libya, the Libyans, which would be Libya, uh, and Egypt, and the Egyptians. So the Egyptians, the Libyans, and the Cushites, he is clearly talking about the people themselves, not just the land that once was named for these people. So in context, I would take it that when he names Edom and Moab and the main part of the Ammonites, he's talking about the people who occupy these land masses and they are historically known as the Edomites, the Moabites, and the Ammonites. Now, Daniel promises that these three countries and the peoples who occupy them will not fall victims to the Antichrist as he marches up and down the Mediterranean coast uh, and is intent upon conquering all of them. Now, obviously, if you go and to look at a world map today, uh, there are no uh, countries listed by name Ammon, Edom, and Moab. In fact, if you look at a world map, you will notice that there's one country now, and it is, of course, known as Jordan. The land mass that is known as Jordan is, in fact, composed of the three groups of people who historically would have been known as the Ammonites, the Moabites, and the Edomites. Ammon 
is, of course, uh, in the north of Jordan. In the central part of Jordan would be where the Moab or Moabites once it were, and the southern part of modern day Jordan is, of course, where Edom would exist. Now, if you went there and you did DNA uh, testing, I'm quite sure that you would find Ammonites, uh, Moabites, and Edomites who are blood pure to the ancient peoples who are named in these geographical locations. Now, northern Ammon, or the northern part of modern-day Jordan, where the Ammonites would live, um, Ammon was a um, son of Lot by his youngest daughter. Now, if you remember the story, um, when Lot escaped from Sodom and Gomorrah prior to God's destruction of it for the evil and wickedness of the people there, uh, he escaped with his two daughters. His wife was turned into a pillar of salt uh, because of her desire to look on what she lost. The two daughters, having no sons or children and having presumably no uh, relatives uh, decided to get their father, Lot, drunk um, and engage in an incestuous uh, twice a tryst that resulted in the youngest daughter conceiving a son uh, whom she named Ammon who became the Ammonites. The central part of modern-day Jordan would be home to the Moabites, uh, Lot, uh, who is also a son of Lot by his older daughter, who too decided to uh, engage in uh, intercourse with her father after he got drunk, and she conceived, and his name the, the boy born to her was Moab. So these are two brothers who are cousins of uh, Abraham, uh, who would be distant relatives from uh, Abraham. The south part of the country, modern day, is Edom. And if you remember, Esau um, was uh, the progenitor of the race that we now call Edom, great-grandson of Abraham uh, through uh, a uh, situation that would definitely not have been uh, the perfect will of God. But Ammon, Moab, and Edom uh, one way or another can trace their ultimate lineage back to Abraham and, of course, the significance that God has for those people. In the eschatological future, we have to, uh, once again, um, ask, are, is the text describing the peoples? or the land and the peoples, or just the land. This actually gets to the question of whether a literal fulfillment necessitates a literal peoples in a literal place in order for biblical prophecy to prove to be true. Is Literal fulfillment, the question that we need to ask, does a literal fulfillment require the peoples known by the name Ammonite, Moabites, and Edomites be physically in a land called by those names? Now, of course, if you look at a world map today, ladies and gentlemen, you will see that 
there there are no geographical designated places on the world map ammonites moabites and Edomites. but of course as you very well know if you look at a world map prior to the 1900s there would have been no land called Jordan these countries take names some of them the result of British or other European countries having conquered them and used them as vassals for a certain amount of time uh, the the Jordanians uh, who are really an amalgam of many different people groups um, are composed of the different genetically significant peoples that the Bible predicts. I predict that in some point in the future what we now call modern Jordan will be broken up I personally tend to take prophecy at face value and I believe that if the Bible says there will be Ammon, Moab, and Edom, I believe not only the ge geographical location will be precise and historically accurate but the peoples there as well. Now that necessitates that at some point in the future I believe that the country of Jordan will be redivided and that those individual people groups will once again have a geographical location by a people whose DNA will demonstrate that they are in fact Edomites, Moabites, and Ammonites. These are the kinds of geographical changes that I believe the earth will see and will experience at some point in the future and that they will then be in right position to see eschatological fulfillment just as the Bible says. I believe in the literal historically accurate fulfillment of scripture and therefore I believe Ammon Moab and Edom will once again come to their historically significant geographical location on the world map and that this will precede the final week of Daniel as we know it. Thanks for listening to Bible Prophecy Daily. We hope you learned something valuable today. Be sure to subscribe wherever you heard this podcast so you never miss an episode.